Let's bring in Texas Congressman Michael McCall, the top Republican on the Foreign Affairs Committee. They were briefed his committee uh, from by the White House earlier today. Congressman, always good to have you with us. Obviously, these are Thanks, very Martha. tense times. Um, what did you take away from the briefing that you received this morning? Well, it's, it's a, a very grim assessment. Um, I think the time for diplomacy is, is uh, running out and the noose is tightening around the neck of Ukraine um, with 130,000 uh, combat ready troops on the border now in attack position uh, to invade uh, Ukraine. I do think it's just a matter of days, uh, if not hours, uh, before they do this. And this is really what happens, Martha, when you uh, project weakness uh, throughout the world and invites aggression. They've been doing this buildup since last March, and we have had no deterrence to stop it. And now I'm afraid it's too little, too late, and we're going to see an invasion of the size we've never seen in Europe since World War II. So here is a Vladimir, here's a Sergei Lavrov, the Russian foreign minister, talking about allowing more time for diplomacy at this late juncture. Listen to this. It seems to me that our options are far from exhausted, but they should not continue indefinitely. But at this stage, I would suggest that we continue the talks and build on them. Is there any indication from the briefing that you received today, Congressman, that the White House is open to perhaps getting into some kind of negotiations over weapons on our side of the border or Russia's side of the border that could bring this to a standstill or at least to, you know, get everyone to stop for a moment? I mean, they, they have been talking about, you know, this IMF treaty that uh, President Trump uh, got out of because Russia is violating it about new agreements on nuclear weapons. Uh, but it's a question of do you trust the Russians with that? I know that's been one uh, centerpiece for their diplomatic efforts. And you're right, the foreign minister would like to uh, uh, talk more in terms of diplomacy. What I see is very different, though, when I look at Putin surrounded by his most hawkish leaders. This is his time. He's wanted this for uh, his entire presidency. And uh, Ukraine is a breadbasket. It is um, it's a legacy issue. It also weakens and divides NATO from his perspective. And lastly, uh, Martha, the energy cannot be underestimated here. If he controls the Black Sea and the two ports, Mariupol and Odessa, he controls all energy coming in and out of the Black Sea. Um, I, I want to play for you Nancy Pelosi in an interview yesterday talking about possible outcomes here. Mm. It's about diplomacy deterrence. Diplomacy deterrence, and the president's made it very clear, there's a big price to pay for Russia to go there. So if Russia doesn't invade, it's not that he never intended to. It's just that the sanctions Are you worked. If Russia doesn't invade, it's not that he never intended to. It's just that the sanctions worked. Your thoughts on that, Congressman? Well, there's a lot of talk in diplomacy, no action, no deterrence passive deterrence at best. We've been advocating for active sanctions because it is an act of provocation, what they're doing even before an invasion. To you know, Why did he waive Nord Stream 2 pipeline sanctions that Congress mandated uh, in the national security of the United States allows Putin to build his pipeline into Europe? This was the beginning of this downfall. And then we had Afghanistan and Putin looked at that and thought, you know what, now's the time. And President Xi in China, there's the same same thing that unholy alliance we saw play out at the Beijing Olympics um, to me is very frightening because now they have a pact against NATO and Western aggression, not only with respect to Ukraine, but but Taiwan as well. Congressman McCall, thank you very much. Uh, head of the Foreign Relations Committee. Good to have you with us today, sir, as always. Thanks, Martha.